Chapter thirty three of Black Oxen by Gertrude Atherton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Lynn Thompson. Chapter thirty three. Don't be a flat tire, don't be a dumbbell, run from the dumb ducks, run from the plumbers. Ha 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 ha. Oglethorpe pounded on the door with his stick. There was a sudden hush in the room, then a wild scurry and a slamming door. He rattled the knob, and, to his surprise, for he had assumed that these wild parties of his young friends were soundly barricaded, the door opened. There were only four young men standing about a table covered with the remains of a chafing-dish supper and many champagne bottles, but an excited whispering came through the partition. Young Farron was leaning against the table, his large moon-face pallid with fright, as he recognised Oglethorpe and Clavering, fright was wiped out by astonishment and relief. "'Thought you were the police,' he muttered. "'Though they've got no business here. "'I've come for Janet. "'Go into that room and bring her out at once. "'Janet ain't here. "'Haven't seen Janet for a week. "'Tried to get her on the phone early this afternoon and couldn't. "'If you don't go into that room and fetch her, i will and he started for the inner door farron with drunken dignity opposed his broad bulk now mr oglethorpe you wouldn't do that ladies in there chorus girls that's a lie stand aside farron who was very young and very drunk but who had a rudimentary sense of responsibility where girls of his own class were concerned burst into tears you wouldn't mr oglethorpe i swear to god janet's not there but but some of her friends are they wouldn't want you to see them his mood changed to righteous indignation what right you got breaking into a gentleman's rooms like a damned policeman it's an outrage and if i had a gun i'd shoot you i'd i'd and then he collapsed on a chair and was very sick oglethorpe turned to clavering who had thought it best to remain in the hall and watch other exits just stay there will you he turned to the three gaping youngsters you dare make a move and i'll knock your heads together just remember that you're drunk and i'm sober he went into the next room and immediately saw several forms under the bed he reached down and jerked them out by their legs they rolled over covering their faces and sobbing with fright emancipated as they were and disdainful of pre-war parents when it came to late parties in a bachelor's rooms they exercised strategy to slip out not defiance oh mr oglethorpe gasped one convulsively don't tell on us please i have no intention of telling on you you can go to the devil in your own way for all i care i'm after janet she's not here that's what i'm going to find out he opened the door of a wardrobe and another girl tumbled into his arms shrieked and flung herself face downward on the bed but it was not janet he investigated every corner of the apartment and then returned to clavering slamming the door behind him she's not there lee he said leaning heavily against the wall where in god's name is she i don't know where to look next this is her particular gang she has no other intimates that i know of but what do i know about her anyway you're sure she isn't hiding anywhere at home search the house from top to bottom i suppose it isn't likely that she's gone to any of her aunts good lord no she'd take a chance on mother but never with any of the rest of the family and she's got no money i saw to that do you suppose she's roaming the streets well she can't roam long legs will give out perhaps she's home by now or at mrs oglethorpe's better telephone they went out and found a public telephone janet had not been seen nor heard from you don't think it's going to be another dorothy arnold case gasped oglethorpe who seemed completely unnerved good heavens no jim and she's able to take care of herself nobody better she'll give you a scare and then turn up 
with her thumb at her nose likely better come up to my rooms and have a drink all right i can't go home and i don't want to be alone anywhere i'd go out of my senses anything might happen to her and i shan't call in the police until the last minute filthy scandal police certainly not and as janet is cold sober be sure she'll come to no harm a few moments later they were in the lift ascending to clavering's rooms hello he said as he opened the front door of his little hall the fool maid has left the light on and as they entered the living room what the devil cigarette smoke hung in the air there was a wild shriek from a corner of the room a slim girl leapt across the intervening space like a panther and flinging herself upon oglethorpe beat his chest with her fists you damned old plumber you old dumb duck shrieked his little daughter what did you come here and spoil everything for he'd have had to marry me to-morrow if you minded your own business i'll claw your eyes out but her hands were imprisoned in her father's hard fists and she turned and spat at the petrified clavering i hate you i hate you but i'm going to marry you all the same one way or another i'll get you i meant to wait a while for i hadn't had fun enough yet and i'd have precious little with you you old flat tire but when i heard that old zattiani woman's got hold of you and then locked up and not able to do a thing i thought i'd go mad i dropped my diamond bracelet out of the window and one of the servants let me out i won't tell which you've been seen coming out of her house at all hours but she's a thousand years old and nobody cares what she does but i intended to rouse this whole house and i'd have been so compromised you'd have had to marry me you're a gentleman if you are a damned old leftover and you're a friend of granny's and dad's i'd have had you tied up so tight you'd have toddled straight down to the city hall clavering stared at her wondering how women felt when they were going to have hysterics what a night and this girl's resemblance to her grandmother was uncanny he could see the jane oglethorpe of the portrait in just such a tantrum and he had thought he knew both of them he wanted to burst into wild laughter but the girl was tragic in spite of her silly plot and he merely continued to regard her stonily how did you get in he asked that's not easy in this house i just got in the lift and told the boy i was your sister just arrived from the south and he let me in with the pass-key he took me for sixteen and said that as you weren't one for chickens he'd chance it you'll get the sack in the morning i don't care what happens to him suddenly she burst into tears her face working like a baby's and flung herself into her father's arms make him marry me daddy make him i want him i want him oglethorpe put his arms about her but his sympathies were equally divided and he understood men far better than he did young girls you wouldn't want to marry a man who doesn't love you he said soothingly where's your pride who cares a damn about pride i want him and that's all there is to it she whirled round again do you think you're in love with that rejuvenated old dame who's granny's age if she's a day she's hypnotized you that's what it isn't natural it isn't it isn't i certainly shall marry madame zattiany if she will have me oh tears dried she showed her teeth like a treed cat her eyes blazed again and she would have precipitated herself upon him but her father held her fast oh 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 it can't be it can't be it's as unnatural as if you married granny it isn't fair how dare she come here with her whitewash and sneak young girls lovers away from them really janet oh i know you thought you didn't care for me but you always did and i'd have got you in time i knew there was no chance for marion and anne they're old maids and i'm young young if i'd cut out the fun and concentrated on you i'd have got you i wish i had i wish i had but you were such an old flat tire i thought you were safe 
"'What in heaven's name makes you think you're in love with me?' exploded Clavering. "'Your opinion of me is anything but complimentary, and I'm everything your chosen companions are not. You don't want me any more than I want you. You've simply been playing some fool game with yourself.' it's not it's not it's the real thing i've been in love with you since i was six ask daddy daddy didn't i always say i was going to marry him yes when you were little more of a baby than you are now can you imagine how ashamed you'll be of such an undignified performance as this i ashamed not much i always intend to do just as i please and damn the consequences a fine wife you'll make for lee or any other man i'd make him the best wife in the world i'd do everything he told me no i wouldn't yes i would sheer femaleness and the spirit of the age seesawed inconclusively anyhow i'd make you happy because i'd be happy myself she added naively much happier than your grandmother perhaps you will oblige me by making no further allusion to madame zattiany no i won't and the first time i see her when there's a lot of people round i'll tell her just what she is to her face if you dare clavering advanced threateningly and she swung herself behind her father who however took her firmly by the arm and marched her to the door enough of this he said you come home and pack your trunk and to-morrow we take the first steamer out of new york if there isn't one We'll take the train for canada i won't go it's either that or a sanitarium for neurotics i'll have you strapped down and carried there in an ambulance you may take your choice good night lee forget it if you can as clavering slammed the door behind him he envied men who could tear their hair he had wanted to spend a long evening alone thinking of mary zattiany dreaming of those vital hours before him and he had been treated to a double nightmare for the moment he hated everything in petticoats that walked and he felt like taking a steamer to the ends of the earth himself but he was more worn out than he knew and was sound asleep fifteen minutes later End of chapter thirty three